Jason Reitman, director Hi. of Labor Day, Joyce Maynard, author of the novel Labor Day, on which the movie is based. Thank you for being here and bringing this beautiful movie to our film festival. Thank you for bringing this beautiful movie <laughs> yeah. to my book. I was about to say, you know it's a success when the director and the author are sitting next to each other. That's right, not like... His, yeah, Keep me away from yeah her. usually there'd need to be like a potted plant or something here in between us. So that's my first question. How did you come together and agree to sort of, how did you find Joyce's book and so on? Yeah. Um, the book was published in 2009, and I heard from Jason very soon after, and we had a great three hour cup of coffee. That's but right. the first thing that he said after that, do you remember? You said you wanted to come over to my house and learn how to make a pie. That's true. Yes, and yeah. he did it. And that, I, I mean, <laughs> I already loved his movies, so I, I, was, I felt very fortunate to begin with. Um, and I loved it that he's young, because the main character in this movie actually is a, is a young man about the age yeah, no, of you. Yeah, right around uh, how old I was um, in 1987. I mean, we're looking at a 13-year-old boy through the eyes of the man that he becomes. That's right. Um, but I also loved Jason's movies, so I felt incredibly fortunate. And then he came over to my house and he said, you know, that pie scene really matters to this film, and mm -hmm. I want to see you make a pie and learn <laughs> how to make a pie. And he did. That was really, because I'm horrendous in the kitchen. I mean, it's just horrible. And I, You made a great pie. We actually, well... And you brought it home through your plane, hands. <laughs> it was like it was like the ghost scene, you know. She was basically forming my hands. Otherwise, I would have never been able to accomplish kind it. Kind of like in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, I, uh, I the first copy of Labor Day that I got was actually in galleys, and my producer Helen Esterbrook said to me, "This is like nothing you've ever done, or nothing you've ever said you wanted to do." But I just have a feeling that you're going to love it. And she was. I didn't hear you. I didn't know that was Absolutely that. right. I read it, and well, there was nothing cynical about it. If you look at it, it's nothing like any of my other work. And but I completely fell I've in love with it. Never been able to become cynical. And uh, after all these years, there was something about the DNA of the book that was actually very similar to the, my other work, which is um, characters making inexplicable decisions uh -huh. and uh, and and complicated characters, complicated relationships, uh, people who needed each other, and. I, I completely fell for the book. Uh, I read it, I, I wept, and I was just blown away that Joyce had somehow understood how to write the inner workings of a 13-year-old boy. It felt so true to me. And uh, thus began our process. And I, I, I adapted the book actually very quickly and I sent yeah, a copy we, of the yes. screenplay uh, to Joyce and we were all ready to go and we asked uh, Kate Winslet to do the movie and she said yes and I thought okay we're making a movie but she wasn't available for a year so in the end we had to wait, we waited a, I think a year and a half for worth Kate. waiting for it. Oh, wow. yeah. waiting for it. so yeah. so tell me a little about casting how did you just how did you choose Kate and Josh and how did you guys feel about it in the end? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I had both of them in mind while I was writing and the I'll screenplay. And I'll tell you, I had, I didn't have Josh in mind, but I had somebody connected to Josh in a way. I always, when I write a novel, I'm, it's not that I'm trying to get the novel made into a movie. It's more that I see a movie already in my head and I'm describing the movie that I see. But, but I cast it in my head as Tommy Lee Jones, but yeah. I will say to an AARP audience, Tommy Lee Jones 30 years ago because that was my Tommy Lee Jones mm -hmm. and of course as we know Josh Brolin has played the young Tommy Lee Jones so it we were basic, basically on the same page. Yeah, two exactly. different generations yeah it's in sync yeah and you kept the son as the narrator in the right. movie talk both both of you talk about I mean why did you have the son's point of view in the book and why did you keep it in the movie yeah I'm more curious why well you. I I am in no way this character Adele. I mean, I am none of my characters and all of my characters. And that goes right down to the girl Eleanor, the 13-year-old the girl. But, but one aspect of this story speaks to my own experience in a very deep way, which is that I was a single mother of, in my case, three children, but two of them were sons, in a small New Hampshire town, trying to reconcile my responsibilities and needs personally to, to take care of my children with my longing to take care of myself and 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 a yearning um, a romantic yearning for something beyond motherhood um, and that part 
that part was me. Um, and I even dro drove that car, although I never told Jason that. And then I saw the movie. That was my car, actually, during those years. But, but I, I, as I was writing this book, I imagined seeing aspects of what I was going through during those years through the eyes of my sons, who are now 29 and 31 years old. And, and seeing a, a boy at the, uh, just at the outset of his own sexual life looking at the sexual life of his mother. Right. Which is hard enough if his mother's married to his father, but if she's not. Right. And how about, why'd you, why'd you keep the son? As the, you know, as the narrator. I, it's, it's so hard uh, a question to answer because I can't really imagine it any other way. That was, that was just my way into the book. Uh, the, the point of view of the book is so accurate, uh, particularly what you just mentioned, the, the, those first moments of sexuality, seeing, you know, the, that's the form of, a, of a, a girl's bra strap through the back of her shirt while sitting in class. I mean, all these little moments, and there's so many of those. Frankly, the hardest thing about adapting Joyce's novel was that so much worked, so much was so good, that getting it down into 120 pages of screenplay, getting it down into what will be a two-hour movie, is very tricky. Well, there's a solution, of course, to people that can then read the book. That's true. <laughs> we happen to have here. <laughs> if they want more. Um, and you do want more. I mean, yeah. uh, it is actually a great, uh, it is a great companion piece to each other in that the book only offers further insight into these characters, further plot, uh, and, and reveals the characters in a more beautiful way. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, we at, at ARP have, as you know, what we call Movies for Grownups, and we have um, two categories of awards we give each year mm -hmm. for a movie, one called A Grown-Up Love Story, mm -hmm. and the other called Intergenerate Best Intergenerational Film. Mm -hmm. and, and this falls in both categories. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and while, and part of the reason I really lobby for this myself, um, while you're not 50, nor are, are Kate Winslet and Josh Brolin, which lots of times our, our winners, our movies have over 50 people. I qualify. The, you do. <laughs> Barely. The love story is is one that that this grown up audience can relate to. As it's a person who's lost and is taking care of this child, and then and then to have this intergen, it really was spectacular. So I and you know I I, I love. Um, I mean I don't want to give anything away, obviously, for people right. who haven't seen this movie. But um, as a person who just turned 60 last week. Um, mm -hmm. And just got married last summer. I'm I'm a huge romantic. I hmm. I I still I, I believe in love stories for people. I, I don't think there's a, a an expiration date exactly. for that. Oh, well said.